Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different to what we're used to. I'm usually either talking about sims or playing a game or whatever, go we're not doing that today. We're actually going to be talking about something that I've been thinking a lot about and I just really felt the need to tell you all for more than one reason. One of them being, you know, the channel name is changing and I don't want anyone looking back at my old videos and going, oh my god, why are they saying Hi, my name's Lizzie. Hi everyone, it's Lizzie. Hello everyone, it's Lizzie. Hello everyone, it's Lizzie. Like, what? I, th I thought they were called Alex. Like, wh what's going on? And so I just think this is um, important to have on record for future purposes to look back at. And yeah, but I guess the main reason is that I will be raising a lot of important points and a lot of things that I feel may be valuable to somebody else out there. Because while I am going to be talking mainly about things specifically about how I feel and about being transgender or being LGBT and just what I want you to know is that you don't need to be LGBTQ plus to be able to find the value in what I'm going to say in this video. There's going to be a lot to unpack. And yeah, I think this is just valuable for anyone who is trying to find their identity. I think I am going to say things that apply to everybody. Um, not just the minority group that I am in, but just anybody in the world who is struggling with just finding themselves. Because identity is a strange thing, you know, everybody has an image of themselves on the inside, I find. And finding yourself, it could literally just be changing your hair one day and going, this is mommy. And yeah, you do not need to be LGBT to want to find out who you are um, because we are unique people. I don't think being, you know, just because you're straight, white, cis, whatever, it doesn't mean you can't, does it doesn't mean you have to copy what every other straight, white, cis person is doing. But enough of that, I'm gonna talk about why I am no longer transgender. I have, identified as a transgender woman for almost two years. I know that that is not a very long time in the grand scheme of things and especially not compared to the majority of transgender women out there. But I would say that I have been transgender long enough to kind of understand how it works and ha get kind of a grasp of how life is for a transgender woman, even though that I, I will never fully ever know because I've only been transgender for two years and I also have never been on hormones. I have been on a waiting list ever since I came out as transgender and I think I've got about a year left and looks like I'm cancelling now. But what I want to do first off is uh, put out a little bit of a disclaimer. I am not transphobic. Do I look transphobic? No. I am going to be talking about some things that may come off that way. The reasoning for why I am not transgender but I will tell you wholeheartedly that what I'm saying about myself is how I feel about myself. I do not feel this about every other transgender woman in the universe because I know that the difference is, is that they all struggle with uh, gender dysphoria and I do not. I thought I had gender dysphoria and it's one of those things where you don't know how it feels unless you've ever actually felt it and so it's very easy to mistaken another feeling for gender dysphoria. And it's very easy to think you have something that you've never had because you don't know what it feels like. So you don't know what to compare it to. And yeah, it's a very confusing thing. And I think that's why the transgender process is so long, especially in the UK, because of 
how much of a grey area there is and I think it's important for people like me trying to find their identity and trying to find who they are. I think it's important to remember that there is a grey area and you do not have to be one or the other and that is what I'm going to be talking about mainly but I think but as I said there is some logic that I think everyone on this planet should take into consideration for their own lives. So let's get into it. If you enjoy this type of content then please leave a like to let me know and consider subscribing keep the and, and consider subscribing clicking the bell notification. There we go. So you can get notified when the next video arrives. So I want to start off by giving you all kind of a rundown of my life with being the person that I am, being the feminine man that I am and all the things that led up to me going hmm maybe life would be better as a woman so let's let's kind of let's kind of turn back the tips here yeah so I was born obviously I was born a man and I was I was always quite feminine I'm gonna say that I was always I always had like girls toys and you always hear this story from like feminine gay men to transgender women like you always hear the same story oh I, I, I was into girls toys when I was little and it's so true because you're it's an, at an age where you haven't been told by society what to do yet you haven't been assigned what your gender role is yet there's so because it's not a thing in your mind. It's only once you get to puberty that people really start getting serious. Like, no, you you should like girls. You should be doing this. You should wear pants. You, and that's when people really start telling you what to do. But in some unfortunate cases, people are told what to do from a very very young age. My mum could have just as easily just went, no, you cannot have that dress. No, you cannot have those toys. You are not allowed them she could have just as easily done it and I'm really happily and I'm really happy that she didn't and it's something that I'm really grateful for because I probably would be living a lie right now or I would probably know who I am on the inside but because of the family and the friends that I've surrounded myself with I'm kind of trapped in my closet and if I come out I, I, I would have been ruined but that's not how it's been. In fact, it's actually been the opposite. My mum's embraced who I am. From a very young age, as I said, she bought me, I was very into Disney princesses, so she always got me the costumes if I asked for them. Again, she didn't push it onto me like some mothers do. I know there's that, that happens, it's crazy. Um, no, that did not happen with me. I just kind of gravitated toward, towards it. I looked at the thing in the star and I was like, I want that. I, I would like to wear that and she was fine with it I distinctly remember that when I was in like reception or for any of my American viewers I think that's kindergarten but we call it reception in the UK and in the little playground we had we had a small plastic toy box and it was filled with like all these toys and in it was this kind of it almost looked like a wedding dress but it was like a costume of some movie have you ever seen those costumes where th there's like there's like a brooch or like a cameo of and it's like a picture of whoever the dress belongs to in whatever movie it is. Like, have you ever seen that? The most, the mostly like Disney princess ones. And I remember that this dress had that on the front, but I do not remember who the girl was. I remember looking at it and not ever seeing that film. The best way I can describe the dress is yeah basically a wedding dress and I have no idea what film it was from but anyway I distinctly remember fighting with the girls in my class over wearing this dress in the playground it was crazy I know I keep saying it's crazy a lot but it, it really is when I think about how I how open I was how much I didn't care how much I was unknowing 
to how society treats people like me. I was untainted by that at that point. I didn't care, I just thought it was normal. And it is normal, just not in, just people aren't, some people aren't very nice and you have to, I, I grew to learn that. Um, especially once I hit puberty, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, at this point, I, at this point, I would have been about 10, 11 years old. And there was a girl in my class who had the, the most gorgeous, long, wavy ginger hair. And she was very insecure about it, but I was absolutely enamored by this hair. And at the time, I remember, I remember thinking that I had a crush on her because I was like, oh my God, this girl is so beautiful. This, this, she, she's a goddess. Look at her. And yeah, it, it I, th I thought I was in love with her and I remember telling my parents we were going out for some reason but when you're at that age you don't you don't really understand your feelings as I said before when you've never felt something before you can kind of mistaken other feelings for that feeling and that is exactly what I did in that situation as well where I didn't know what having a crush felt like I didn't know what having attraction felt like to somebody. So the feeling of thinking someone's beautiful kind of made me go, oh, so this is what a crush feels like. And it's not, it's completely way off. It's a completely different thing. But yeah, so that was that. I, I look back and I think, yeah, I most definitely wanted to be her rather than be with her which is also a very common transgender story as well you hear a lot of transgender women saying oh yes I met this girl and I thought I was in love with her but I then found it out I didn't want to be with her I wanted to be her and uh, very normal for a transgender person to think that way especially when as men we are systematically pressured to be with women. Everybody called me gay, even though I hadn't come out, and I didn't even know I was gay. Like, other people knew I was gay before I knew I was gay. It was so strange. But how can you not think that when I was wearing my jump, we had school jumpers as our, as our uniform, and I would get the, the neck of the jumper, and I would kind of like put it on my head, the neck around my head, so I felt like I had long hair, and people would kind of like, I felt like they were laughing with me in the sense that they got that it was, oh, oh my God, pardon me. They got the sense that it was a joke. Like I was just joking like, oh, look at me. I've got something funny on my head. But I didn't think of it that way at all. I just wanted long hair. And that was me kind of like living out my fantasy. Uh, look at me now. Look at me now. Look at it. Oh my god. But yeah. And then secondary school happened. And I went through all of my teenage years up to now. Feeling very... Well, not up to now. Up to about two years ago. Um, feeling very segregated from people. Because puberty happened. And people start to gravitate to their boxes to the categories and I was ostr ostracized from everybody I felt so outcasted because you know the boys didn't relate to me because I was feminine and the girls didn't really relate to me either because I was a boy and so I it was very hard for me to find my clique to find my group especially in a smaller place where I live there's not a lot of LGBT people. I can imagine I would have been a lot better off if I'd lived in a bigger city since there is a lot more of that going on. But up here, basically in the part of England that nobody really cares about, yeah. It's kind of, I, I was by myself. And so I spent all my time switching from friend group to friend group, thinking I was gonna find these, th these friends and I just didn't. And yeah. All my friends were always girls, but I felt different to them still because I was a boy and there were so many things that I couldn't relate to and I just felt so different and I didn't like it. 
And I think then quarantine happened and I had a lot of time to myself and a lot of thinking to myself and I thought to myself, I really want to wear dresses. I've always been that way. It's always been natural to me to wear dresses and I want long hair and I'm very feminine and I guess I just thought to myself, maybe I am a woman on the inside. Maybe that's just how it is. And so from that moment, I, I, was, I was dead set on being a woman. But I was at a school that wasn't really very accepting of that and was like, no, 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 get back in your box. And it, it was quite, yeah, it, it, it wasn't very nice. And it caused a lot of issues, a lot of chaos, and especially all the hormones that were going around in my head at the time. I'm still not completely out of the teenage stages yet, even now, but then I do believe they were a lot worse. And so it was like rebellion almost. I would run away from, from lessons and stuff like that. And not necessarily in a situation where anybody is being transphobic or homophobic towards me, but just because I knew that everyone in the room was against me because that was the environment that I was in. I was always alone. I never had anybody to talk to and I feel like I'd be a lot happier with myself now or I would have been a lot happier with myself earlier if I had found a, a group of people who I could really relate to and I just didn't have that. It was me against the world. It all got too much and I ended up in hospital and I ended up in a psych ward. Now, a psych ward is not what you think it is. A psych ward is not an asylum. It's not how they portray it in the movies really. Uh, well, especially not where I was anyways, maybe in other wards, but my area, my whole build it was like an entire building um was dedicated to people who were a danger to themselves rather than other people we were all nice i guess we were just really depressed we we weren't these crazy people who you'd imagine in a psych ward we were just depressed teenagers who couldn't be trusted to be alone for two seconds and yeah in that hospital i took it as an opportunity to experiment and start wearing clothes. You know, you're away, you start wearing female's clothes, sorry. Um, you're away from society, I think. When, when, you're in, when you're in one of those places, you barely ever go outside. I think the only time I went outside was it was kind of Christmas time. And so I went out Christmas shopping with like the nurses and a couple of other like patients. But that was about it. That would be one of the only times that I would ever leave. There wasn't much opportunity to leave. So you were kind of cut off from the outside world. You were in your bubble. Yeah, so I took that as an opportunity to experiment. And I started wearing extensions and I started taking photos of myself. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is it. This is, this is what I want. And yeah, after I left the hospital, and I've got a whole story about leaving the hospital, oh my God, it was a mess. But after I left the hospital, I carried everything that I'd procured about what I like to wear and who I was. I carried all of that knowledge into my outside world life now that I'd um, left the hospital. And so ever since then, I have been presenting as a woman for the, until maybe about a month ago, or maybe like a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, by the way, I have had a lot of time away from YouTube. If you look on my channel, I've been uploading every every Sunday, but I haven't been making a video every, every Sunday, if, if you know what I mean. Like they, the videos you've been seeing, before this are like they're kind of old like they were made a month ago but because they were all made in a very close time space very very short frame of time between each video being made a lot of those videos are old because they've just been getting released procedurally oh my god I i'm so bad at thinking of words but yeah i've been away for a month waiting for all these videos to come out and uh yeah here we are. I've been away for a month 
for a month to be able to think about who I am. Uh, I'm doing my GCSEs right now. By the time you've seen this video, the GCSEs will be over, but um, at the time of recording this video, I've just done an exam today, and Friday will be my last exam. So I'm almost over. Um, it's wait, it's Monday today, Friday will be my next exam. Anyways, what I'm getting at is that this is a point in my life where a lot of things are going on. There's a lot of crazy thoughts going on. I am about to go to college and it's almost like this urgency to feel like I know who I am before I go there so I'm able to focus on my education, which is way more important in, in, in some respects. But yeah, so I came to the conclusion that I was lying to myself a little bit. You know, I always thought that I had gender dysphoria and I, I just don't think I ever did. I think it was more about just wanting to fit in with everybody. I'd never found anybody to relate to or anywhere to go, nobody who understood. And so it was almost like I thought being a woman would help me find that box. Forcefully put myself into a box because I didn't really know of one existing. And yeah, I, it's the fact that I, I have an eight year old sister and she is kind of growing up with this as a brother. <laughs> it's crazy, like, it, 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 must, it must be bizarre. Um, not a lot of people get that experience. And so I just wanted me being in her life to be an opportunity for her to grow into a very loving and accepting person and not be judging of everybody because if she's got a brother that looks like this everything's normal to her and so it's the fact that she'll come to me and she'll be like oh the the boys said i can't play football because i'm a girl and i tell her no, you don't have to be, you can be any gender and still be able to do what you want. Your gender is not a barrier to stop you from doing something. No matter what it is, it shouldn't be a barrier. And even though there is in today's society, uh, I hate saying it like that. But it's so true, there, there is. There, there is so many boundaries, especially for women. Women are stopped from being able to do so many things and there's also the social side of it as well and i'm telling her you don't need to be a boy to play football while i myself i i'm almost telling myself i need to be a girl to wear makeup to present femininity and that is completely wrong and when that was kind of creeping in on me, like, I am kind of a big massive hypocrite. Yeah, it, it kind of made me feel shameful. I'd taken on an identity that I didn't deserve because I'm not a woman. I'm not a woman on the inside. There are people that are, um, but I'll never know what that feels like. I just don't think I'm a woman on the inside. I just. I just, I don't know what I am on the inside. When I look in the mirror, I don't see a woman or a man, I just see me. You know, I, I don't think about it as much as you might think from this video. I really don't think about it that often. It's just really been the last couple of weeks where it's been, come on, come on. You really need to get this sorted, stick to one thing and f just figure out who you are because you're really not gonna have all this thinking time in a couple of months. You're really not. And these thoughts really started happening after the honey glow period had disappeared. It was almost like I was now, oh my God, now I can wear dresses, now I can, now I can walk out on the street and present femininely and, and feel okay with it. And it was just the fact that I didn't look, and I, I, look, I looked like this, but the fact that I saw myself as a woman made me feel so much more comfortable because I felt like, oh, well, I'm a woman, I'm allowed to do this. And that is so untrue. 
but that is how I was feeling. I, I, the only way I was comfortable doing what I wanted was being a woman. And then it's just so, just uh, such a bizarre way of thinking, but so many people think that way and I fell into that trap. You do not, wholeheartedly, you do not need to be a woman to look like a woman. I don't, I don't necessarily want to look like a woman, that's not what I do, that's not, that's not the goal. I just, I wanted long hair. I want to wear makeup. I want to wear women's clothing because it just looks better to me. It's what I find to be beautiful. I, I cannot pick men's clothes. I have no sense of fashion in men's clothes. And again, this isn't a transphobic job because the difference is, is I, was, I wasn't becoming a woman because I had gender dysphoria. I was becoming a woman because I felt like there was no other option. There was no other way for me to feel confident looking the way I do. And I do think that is two different things because I wasn't repulsed by my naked body, but I was insecure of my naked body because my clothing had become my armor because it was almost like I was cosplaying as a woman. And yeah, I know this is such a ramble of like, so many like scrambled thoughts, but this it's really it's a complicated subject All I needed was to just pause and stop going. Oh my god What if everyone doesn't think I look like a woman and you know somebody knows like I was always like that and I was so insecure of my voice as well oh, I'm just working on my light voice, you know, I'm you know, Do you know what? I hate my voice. It started relaxing um because I'm not really thinking about it. I really, because if you've noticed, I try and go, <coughs> hi everyone. Well, no, I don't. I go, hello. <sighs> Wait, let it sit to myself. Hello everyone. <coughs> hello everyone. Hello everyone. <laughs> but yeah, try and lighten my voice a little bit to appeal to normal people. <laughs> But I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, so, you know, weirdos are sticking with me. I'm an introvert as it is, but when you're afraid of your own voice because you're scared of basically outing yourself, it made it even worse. And so there was actually so much pressure added and when I'd come to the realisation that I, that this maybe wasn't for me, it was like a relief. And I didn't expect that, I didn't expect to feel relieved but I did. And it was even telling when I went, oh, well, if I'm gonna be a man now, does that mean I have to cut my hair? And I looked in the mirror and I just remember going, no, no, I don't. Because I remembered how much I wanted long hair all my life, you know, the, the jumper scenario. And again, that was really telling like, oh, I'm a, I'm a man now, I have to do this, this, and this, and this. Because our whole lives we are told we have to do this, 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 and this to feel worthy. And it's not true. You can do whatever the hell you want. If you're a girl, go, go kick that football girl. And if you're a boy, grow your f hair out. Come on, if you want. If you want, uh, that's what I mean. If that's what you want, then just do it. Just do what you want. And I think that is the main takeaway from uh, today's TED Talk. Yeah. I hope that anything I've said is helpful to you and how you feel about yourself and how you're going to live your life. Because it is, while it's not important in some aspects, you know, you can't let it take over your life, but it is also important in others because the way you live is important. The way you see yourself is important because you can drive yourself around the bend. So that's the end of it. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave, leave your love down below. Um, I've changed it to love now because I think thoughts and suggestions is a bit, it's a bit too much of a window. But I should stop thinking like that because I'm gonna get hate no matter what. Haters, come at me, bitch. I'm not going to be leaving just yet, I'm going to do a small little, well it might be small, I'm just going to do a subscriber update. So, commence with the subscriber update. Just a little bit of an update on my life and what's going to be happening on the channel. There was only one video left on the queue and then this video will come out after that one. Yes, 
let's talk business about what is next. So, I am about to finish my GCSE exams and the thing about that is, is that it means that after my final exam I do not need to return to school again. And while usually there will be a six week summer holiday period, because I am off early, because I don't need to be at school anymore, um, because they're letting us out early, it means that instead of six weeks this year I get ten weeks which means 10 lovely weeks to focus on the channel. Last year, I got really depressed during the six weeks. I was like, uh, all that time alone, you think the, the most absurd things. It's, anyways, I don't wanna spend too much time alone. I wanna keep active and I think that's what is important is keeping yourself moving, especially if you're somebody who, um, struggles with depression and or anxiety. I think the best method is distraction and just keeping busy and also keep doing things that you enjoy, keep doing what you love. I enjoy making videos and so that's what I'm going to be doing throughout the six weeks holidays. I might even try doing a midweek video like on a Wednesday or something like that um, but only during the holiday period because I will start getting really busy once I get to college. And yeah, so there, might, there may be a midweek video, there may also not, but that might be a thing that happens. We'll just see, we'll just, we'll just see. I think the other thing I wanna mention is upcoming games. I know I have like two series on the go, both of which I never planned to be um, in like a series, um, I think, on the, off the top of my head, there might be more, but I think off the top of my head, Close and Shift and Dungeon Nightmares 2, both of them, yeah, I really didn't see it coming, that they were going to end up having to be put into parts. I think Close and Shift, I'd be able to do in one part. Dungeon Nightmares 2, we might even have like three or four more parts. I don't know how long the game is. But it's definitely, there's definitely much more to it than I anticipated. And I'm also planning on starting a new series. Maybe multiple new series. Not, not too many because then there's like too much to like, you know, think about. Yeah. I might start a new series. But I do all, also have to finish the other series. But that'll come in due time. And the quarry just uh, recently released and I will not be playing it. I wish I could, but I will not be playing it um, because I just don't have any hardware for it. It is a massive game and um, yeah, I just don't have the hardware for it, so I will not be playing it, um, or at least not when it's new, but I'm staying away from videos of it because I do want to play it eventually, even if it's like in five years. So I will be, that is on my list, but maybe not for, for a while. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's the subscriber update. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I've been recording for 48 and a half minutes. And yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how much I can cut it down to. I feel like I've just been rambling. I'm, I might have said a lot of things that maybe don't make as much sense. But just the main thing to remember, just just be yourself. And as much as that's such an overdone like phrase or whatever, there is so much underestimated meaning to that word. I mean, just look at me. Just look at me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for watching. I, I'm out of energy now. Oh my god, all that talking. I don't usually talk for that long. Oh my god, it's almost 50 minutes. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave your love down below, and, and be yourself.